my name is Chris Kurzik from Athabasca Engineering Solutions and, and uh, about us what do we do well we provide equipment re-rating and, and fitness for service uh, services we look at reliability and safety studies and we do third-party compliance audits to make sure that uh, uh, your in the engineering group is following the uh, local authorities we do training and certification and uh, we do materials and welding studies and investigations and uh, we do we do some estimating and economic evaluation based upon uh, particularly mechanical static equipment issues and uh, we've done recently some carbon footprint and emission studies so let's continue on with our videos In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about ASME B313 as it deals with fatigue and cracking and how that ASME code has steps and rules to, to prevent um, you know, fatigue and, and cracking from occurring. And um, the particular um, videos will be based upon 2018 version of B313, but we'll go back in cases uh, to earlier versions so we can kind of look at how the codes changed in the last while and also go forward and I'll talk a little bit about uh, 2020 version, especially with Appendix D, the stress intensities. So let's let's uh, let's jump into it. So the the this areas we're going to cover is chapter one scope and definitions chapter two design and and cycle life of joints and chapter three materials and a five is fabrication assembly and erection what's what's said about that inspection and examination and testing number six and nine high pressure piping there's special rules for for um, cyclic um, service and a little bit about uh, appendix d stress intensity appendix f guidance and precautionary notes and uh, w which is very specific rules for high cycle fatigue which is very interesting and uh, we'll wrap it up with appendix x and expansion joints and this part here is what we're going to deal with in this set of videos. So then we continue on for 305 for pipe, 30523 pipe for severe cyclic service. So it's limited material selections are available based on E, C, and E, F and specific grades of API 5L, example, seamless, you know, X56. And we continue on and 306 is fittings, bends and miters and lab joint branches. And here's a couple of examples of different connections that they get into that. They basically say that, um, you know, fittings are permitted, okay, pro provided that they're forgings and the you know the wrought or seamless welded pipe so the in this case the condition for these ones is that the pipe is 100 percent rt per per you know 344 51 and 341 32. six 306 fittings bends miters laps and branch connections so in this case there's some limitations so the your angle your alpha angle as shown over here um, must be less than or less than or equal to 22 and a half degrees and it must be fabricated to 304 to 3 or and welded to 311.1 So we're going to continue with 306 and we're going to look particularly at the type of lap joint designs which is found in 30644 
And you know these designs are permitted, you know, but there are there are um, restrictions. So if you have a forged lap joint stub end, then you must be designed according to the requirements of 3061. If you have a lap joint or hot forged on a pipe end, then design 30641. If you have a fabricated lap, then they say design to 30641, except the welding must be done to 311.1. Now, what's not permitted? They do not like flared lap joints. A few more notes about uh, 308 and 30821 slip on flanges. Double welded slip on flange welds are required per figure 328.52b. So basically, uh, they, this is the figure, this is, which is you know typically used for the different kinds of connections. Onward we go to more about flanges and uh, B16-5 or ASME B16-47 weld necks are permitted. Uh, similar, but the and or similarly proportion as me B sixteen five or B sixteen four seven, which is for the larger flanges. But you have to you have to consider the notes uh, three o four five one. I've never seen anybody do that. Uh, I've seen them use B sixteen five quite a few times. The we continue here about bolting three o nine. Um, for severe cyclic conditions, they said low yield bolting for flange joints is not permitted. And also we continue here, specific requirements for 311. They said backing insert rings and consumable inserts. They say it's not permitted. This is to be removed and the internal joint face is to be ground smooth because I, I think it's because, you know, the inside here is like a, you know, a stress riser potentially. And so that's why they want you to grind smooth those surfaces. Uh, a note about uh, socket welds. Socket welds larger than two inches are permitted. section called 313 expanded joints and uh, it, that's not to be mixed up with expansion joints. Expanded joints um, you know to create an you know interference connections not permitted for severe cyclical services. Fourteen threaded joints so we got the tapered threaded joints and we've got straight threaded joints and uh, those are the type of ones we're going to talk about in a second here. So what they threaded joints in more detail. So the first one we talked about was the straight and the second one was the tapered. So the, about the tapered threaded joints, they say, you know, use union joints or equal are required. So sort of like in the image to the, to the uh, right there, they say that you have to protect these joints from external loading. So you have to add supports adjacent to those connections if you have this kind of service. And then they go on to say for, for tapered threaded joints, there's a bit more thought here. There's more, uh, no external moments um, are, are permitted. Uh, they're saying that the only thing you can really use it for really is something, for example, like a thermal well, where there is no, you know, bending moments from due to loads. But even then, you know, um, some clients wouldn't even allow that for that kind of service. So, uh, and, and it's only permitted for category D fluid service. And if you're going to use tapered threaded joints, you have to, you know, use mated, mating components, which, um, I've, I've always used, but I guess, you know, they're just making sure that you're not mismatching components. So more about threaded joints. We want to avoid, you know, cyclic loading. And if you're seal welding the component, then they're saying, 
you know, don't, you know, threading compounds not permitted. I've seen that in a lot of specs. Design piping to minimize the stress on joints. And threaded flanges are only permitted for, for category D service. For 315 tube joints, they really don't say a lot. They just say it must be safeguarded for severe loading conditions in the 2018 edition and prior to that. So I guess it's up to the designer to decide, you know, how to safeguard those connections or those joints and I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now. Mm -hmm.